There we and go. And you can take it away, Delane. All right. Thanks, Teresa. Um, yeah, I'm Delane Just. Um, I am a second year student in the MFA in writing program here at uh, in, in Saskatoon at the University of Saskatchewan. Um, I'm currently working on uh, my thesis project, which um, is a collection of short stories, which is why um, some of my workshops recently have all been kind of about short stories, because it's one of the areas of my particular interest. Um, and I love the short story form, which I guess we'll kind of talk about the short story form a little bit today as well. Um, so just to, I guess, get started, I will start sharing my presentation here. Okay. So go to slideshow. Let me just bring up my notes as well. Uh, but if you didn't already know when you signed up today, um, we're talking about short fiction, but in particular, this idea called The Crux. Um, so uh, The Crux itself, uh, we'll start off with just finding the crux, like what is the crux of a story? Like, what do I really mean by that? Um, and then I will go into some revision tactics or things you can use to think about to find the crux and like how then to revise your story and having that crux in mind and basically how to arrange everything to point towards that crux of the story. Um, and so I guess to start this idea of the crux, uh, I'm not sure if it's been used before, um, when I heard of it first, which was from Shailen Bishop. Um, if those of you might be familiar, if you're someone who watches a lot of like YouTube writing content, um, but Shailen is a writer who has a YouTube channel that I particularly am a big fan of called Shailen Writes. Um, and in one particular video titled How to Write a Short Story, they break down this idea of the crux, which is what, um, Part of my presentation is then based on pulling some of Shailen's ideas as well as my own ideas and breaking down then how might you use the crux, what is it, and kind of like that. Um, but so in Shailen's video, um, they describe the crux of a story as the revelation you want to make about your character. Um, so in a sense, the crux, um, as I'll be kind of defining and using it in this presentation, is the main aspect of the story that everything sort of orbits around. It is the hinge of the narrative and what showcases um, what the narrative is truly about, um, particularly in regards to the character. Um, so this is in a sense also um, about like character driven short stories. Um, so some things to keep in mind as well, um, just before we get into it. Um, I always like to point out too that like all writing advice is um, advice from someone and there are rules, but also rules should be broken. And so take everything as it is useful to you. Um, and for some people, the point of their story is just to write a fun story and they might not necessarily need a crux in that story, but the idea of the crux really comes into play in these stories that are character-based, character-focused. And to me, I think that you finding the crux of your story and locating it and really um, drawing the rest of the story to that crux is what really adds like tension and can help build that narrative plot and also what can usually make the climax and conclusion of the story much more impactful um and yeah it's kind of that thing that you dig in and pull out of the narrative um also another thing would be that usually the crux of the story finding it will happen during that revision process of the first draft. So that's something to kind of think about as well, that a lot of the tips later on for finding the crux will be like when you've already got a story at least partially formed and then locating that crux of the story. 
Um, got a little sidetracked there, but yes, yeah, so the crux is, um, Shailen also describes it as the deep-seated thing within the character. Um, so the character's like primary motivation for, per se that is never explicitly stated on the page, but is revealed to the audience through the, um, the story. Um, Shailen also calls it the thing that a therapist would spend years working to unpack from that character. It's that crucial character aspect. In some stories like tragedies, it might be the character's um, fatal flaw could be the crux. Um, but so yeah, for this story, we'll be focusing, or for this presentation, we're focusing mainly on short stories and using the crux in short stories. And now I'll get further into it. So to kind of really showcase what the crux is and where it might fall in a story, I wanted to kind of go back to some of the fundamentals of stories um, and how they're formatted. So the classics kind of sort story arc is the Freytag pyramid. That's the one that most people are familiar with. Um, and the Freytag pyramid often in a short story will be more of a condensed version of what you see in this um, diagram here. Um, typically a Freytag pyramid in a short story might actually end right at the climax of the narrative or um, it might skip the falling action and go like climax conclusion. Um, often the full Freytag pyramid might represent a larger story, a larger body of a story. Um, and the short story, then you kind of just think of it like everything impacted a little bit more with an optional falling action. Um, so then where might the crux fall on this pyramid? Um, typically the crux of the narrative will be tied very specifically to the climax of the story um, or in that conclusion of the story. So we think of the uh, climax of the story being the moment of decision making, the epiphany, and the conflict coming to the head to a head. Um, that's also where the crux um, kind of is really shown to the audience. So if um, we think to about the way that the story kind of forms in this diagram. If we have the start of the conflict, moving into the rising action, building that tension, reaching the climax of the narrative, and then the conclusion, um, in a character-based story, often this will take the form of a conflict being um, in somehow relation to that main character not being able to get what they want, um, the rising action then, those barriers for the main character to find what they want, the climax being a moment of decision-making, epiphany, when all of that conflict, the things that are in their way come to a final moment of there's this unavoidable thing that the character must face. And then uh, conclusion, the kind of afterward of that moment, which sometimes isn't always um, thoroughly shown on the page, but there is usually at least a sense of there is a conclusion following. Um, so uh, I hope I kind of have everyone still on track, but now then if we think of based on that pyramid, um, the crux of the story being the revelation of the story or the moment of change or the emotional impact of the story. So the crux might be, whereas the conflict could be something more like the character wants a glass of water, say, um, and then there's all these things in the way of that character getting the water. There we have our basic line of the plot where the conflict starts and then the, the climax might be that moment of, can they actually get the water? Will they do the thing that's necessary to get the water? Whereas the crux then might be, okay, why do they really want that water? Why is that water so truly important to them? Um, it's that deeper level behind the uh, climax of the story that it really shows 
that revelation and truth of character in that climactic moment. Um, so that's sort of how um, my understanding from Shailen's video, as well as my uh, own understanding of what the crux can kind of be. It's that deeper level that is just under the surface of the words. Um, it's what you understand as a reader, but uh, isn't explicitly usually stated on the page. So why does that person want the water? Maybe that water truly represents control in that person's life. Maybe being able to get that water, what it really represents that character is finding control in their life. So that's more of what the crux is in comparison then to the narrative drive and the climax of the story. Um, I hope that's making sense so far. Um, so, and then with that in mind, um, as I mentioned before, the crux of the story might not really be something that comes to mind during the writing of the first draft. Um, the crux of the story would typically be um, formed or you'd really understand it as the writer when you start to realize what is that underlying thing that the character wants or the character needs? What is that underlying point to this story? Is it about getting from point A to point B? Or is there that deeper level of what getting to point B truly means for the character? Um, so let's take a look. If you think about, I always use this story, Telltale Heart by Edgar Allan Poe as kind of an, my, usual story I use for an example of um, things happening in short stories because it tends to be one that people usually have read at least once and have like kind of an understanding of what it's about but hopefully it'll make sense to you even if you haven't read that story before uh, but so if we take a look at the telltale heart by Edgar Allan Poe um, I've kind of broken it up here between what we see as the character's motivations on the page versus the crux or the deeper level of the narrator's motivation um, on in the second section. So um, on the first side on the left here, I've pulled one quote close to the beginning of the narrative. Um, where the narrator says, I made up my mind to take the life of the old man and thus rid myself of the eye forever. Um, so this is the, one of the motivations that the narrator gives us specifically. The narrator tells us like that his plan is to take the life of the old man and rid himself of that evil eye that, he, um, that he's being haunted by. And at the same time, there's also the sense that this narrator is trying to prove to the audience um, of the text that he is not mad. And we see that throughout the whole narrative, this attempt to say, um, you think I am mad? But actually, um, that's kind of a recurring um, thing with throughout the text. So those are the two motivations we see on the surface of the narration those motivations lead through that rising action of him spying on the old man while he's sleeping um, and eventually during the climax of the narrative um, killing the old man um, for once and for all kind of uh, and so the character's motivations on the surface level they do take us towards that main plot but what we might consider then the crux of the story are the ideas lingering beneath these motivations. Why does the character want to kill this old man? And why does he want to prove he's not mad? I think this can be seen as the subtext um, within the short story. Uh, the narrator says, never before that night had I felt the extent of my own powers of my, uh, I always mispronounce this word, sagacity um, and then right near the climax of the narrative he says the old man's hour had come with a loud yell I threw open the lantern and leaped into the room and so what I kind of drew out is what I thought the crux of this narrative ended up being was the narrator's want for control and for power and I think we see this at hand in both of the 
more obvious character motivations, his want to kill the man and his want to prove he's not mad. The deeper understanding of why he might want to do that could be that he wants to have this power over himself, this control over the reality around him. Um, he wants to control the way readers see him. Um, and so, uh, of course, like without knowing what Poe himself may have thought would have been the crux of the story, this is kind of what the sense of what the crux might be in a narrative. And, we'll, and it can be really helpful when writing your own stories then to create that undercurrent of what you truly think the narrative narrative narration is about, um, what the story is about. Um, and then with that, like we kind of see in Poe's story, the tone, mood, character, plot can all kind of contribute to that kind of key character idea. So if this character is trying to create control, we see that through the, his dialogue, the way he narrates the story, the whole tone of the story, his um, obsession with wanting to show that he is not mad, all of that then drives towards the crux of the story at the same time that it drives towards the climax of the story. Um, so I hope that's still kind of making sense and you're still kind of with me there. Okay, so then to get into now that we, that we hopefully have an understanding of what the crux might be of the short story, um, how can you actually put it to use? And how might you look at your draft and figure out, okay, like, what is this really about? Like, I don't actually know what it, it might be truly about or what this, what other layers I could add to it. And then can you then also expand the story out, but also lead it towards that crux? So that's what we'll be looking at in this section here. Um, and keeping in mind too, that this would be um, when a draft is at least mostly formed. Okay, so a sip of water here. And please feel free to, if there are any questions that come up, to type them in the chat, because I know this can be kind of a, it's a bit theoretical, maybe, so it might be a little bit confusing. So if you need clarification, anything like that, please also feel free to let me know in the chat or if I should slow down a little bit further. Okay. So then... These are some questions that I use when thinking about how to find your story's crux. Um, and these are also some questions that when I did my mentorship with um, Gail Anderson Dargatz uh, last summer, uh, these are some questions that in my short story she would ask of me and say, okay, let's think about this deeper. So first, what I would do is ask myself, what is this story about in general? What is the base level plot? Where is it headed? Um, is it about, um, I'll, I'll return to, um, or I have an, ex uh, an example from my work actually a little bit later, so I won't get into that now, but thinking about, okay, so if it is that story about uh, getting a glass of water, that would be kind of the main narrative would be, um, Bob wants a glass of water, but Deborah just keeps holding it out of reach from him. And every time he lunges forward, she pulls it away. Let's say that that's our basis of our plot. And let's say that at the um, climax of the narrative, um, Bob finally um, d try decides to do something about this. He maybe tricks Deborah and then grabs the water. Um, and that's the climax of the narrative. So then if you have that grounded, so now we have our general plot and then think about, okay, what is that, what is that all about on a deeper level? What is that sort of representing to that main character? Um, and what is it showing us about that main character's character? Um, 
So is getting the water from Deborah really about just wanting that water? Or perhaps he wants to show that he is quick enough to get the water and therefore that he is a capable person. Maybe that's truly what he wants. And that's what's truly about the story is about. Um, then thinking, so what is our overarching tone and atmosphere in the story? Um, this can also be a helpful hint sometimes to figure out what your story might be about on a deeper level. Um, if there's more of a satirical tone, then you kind of know, like if you're taking a humorous but like dry humor tone or making that kind of atmosphere, maybe you will kind of see that message starting to come through, through that sense of tone. If it's a sad tone, like is there this sense of grief underlying the story? How can you then pull that out into the main plot and conflict of the narration? Um, yeah, like what's the main emotional note there? Um, sometimes it just comes down to like, how does the character feel? And then thinking deeper about why would they feel that way specifically? Is it just about the surface level or is there something about this person's nature of their character that is causing them to feel this way in these events? Um, and then also thinking about what is the main event of the story? And that's thinking about what is the um, key, like, uh, climactic moment of the story what is the story leading towards and how then can the this deeper level this deeper idea be also expressed in that moment yeah so digging even a little bit deeper into the characters really like unpacking um where the character's coming from what do they want on the surface versus what do they really want? Um, so really digging into the character motivations and goals uh, and trying to think deeper about what in this character's nature causes these motivations is kind of where that comes from. Um, and then does their deeper desire also work for or against their surface motivations? And that can usually really create those climactic moments where there might be a decision that the character must make in order to get what they want in a more surface level way versus what they truly want. So um, maybe an example later will I kind of show that a bit clearly as well, but essentially just that idea of choosing between the surface level want and the underlying want can be a really great way of also amping up that tension in the narrative um, and can not only reveal the crux, but might even reveal what really is the climax of the story as well, um, if that's something that you're feeling uncertain about. For myself, um, usually a lot when I'm writing my first draft, I will actually get a little bit stuck partway through, like three quarters through, when I'm thinking, where is this story going? And what is the climactic moment of this story? I have the setting, I have the main premise, I'm really excited about the fact that my story is about um, a bunch of college girls in a dorm during a zombie apocalypse, and I'm having fun um, writing about all of that happening. But then I might come to the point, um, and typically for me, this is often during the writing of the first draft and maybe some people um, might um, feel like that as well but for me that's usually when I really get to this moment of wait what am I trying to say and that's when I also like to think about what is the story's crux and then how might that then create the story's climax and conclusion so when that story is already forming, but you're just not certain on where it's supposed to go. Um, or even you're like thinking, how do I end this? I just can't think of any possible ending. Um, sometimes finding that crux of the story at that point is what can really reveal to you how the story should end and um, how that ending might reflect these underlying motivations and this underlying sense of like the key element of the story.
Okay. So here's a bit of like a practical example of how I use the crux to problem solve in my own work during revisions. Um, so this is kind of what it might look like when you have a draft and you're thinking, wait, like, is this actually how I wanted it to be or something's not working? Um, so uh, for my story, it was about this character. Um, you'll see this all on the left side, the character Elliot, who was a young adult male, um, a relapsed alcoholic who was traveling back to his hometown between um, Saskatoon, where he lived with his girlfriend, and Regina, where his parents live. Um, his girlfriend, because uh, of his situation with addiction, um, broke up with him. And he's really feeling this state of rock bottom um, while he's traveling back home to live again with his parents. Um, and so what happens for the main plot of the narrative, that's kind of the character main plot is that while traveling back to his hometown, he takes a pit stop in Lumsden and hears about a Bigfoot sighting and decides, I'm going to search for Bigfoot. Uh, so that was my premise going into the narrative. And that was kind of what my first draft was all about. This guy, he hits rock bottom. And now he's like, I'm going to find Bigfoot. I'm going to go hunting for Bigfoot. Um, so that's where it started. Then I needed to take a step back and think, OK, but what is the story really about? And why is he searching for Bigfoot? Why does he want to find this creature? Um, why does why is there something in his character that makes him want to do this? Um, and that's a question I actually got often from my kind of first readers and workshop was, but why is he doing this? We need a reason for why he's doing this. So to think more about that, I had to ask myself those questions. Why would this character feel compelled to find Bigfoot? Um, and what would finding that creature mean to him? And so thinking about Elliot, his state of rock bottom, um, I started thinking about the character deeper. Um, he is unsure of what to do with his life. He has a hard time changing his ways. That's why he's reached this place in his life. Um, he's been passive until this moment. And so while what he wants on the surface level is to find Bigfoot and to get his girlfriend back and to, to put his life back in order, what he wants underneath all of that to me and what I kind of figured out was that he wants to change his life. He wants to prove himself. He wants to set out to do something and actually do it. He wants to take back control and find that sense of control in his life. So then taking that idea, that crux of what would finding this creature mean to him, it would mean that he would be able to show himself that he could take control of his life. So now knowing that, I go back to the text, back to the story, and I think, OK, how can I make sure this is shown throughout the rest of the narrative and build towards that finding Bigfoot and at the same time build towards that emotional moment of realizing um, that like what Bigfoot does represent to him and getting to that moment. Um, which for me as well in that story, it ends up being that when he finds Bigfoot, he does in a sense prove to himself too that he can do something, but also he sees in the creature um, something of himself reflected back. And so there's also that sense of he went out and did something to take charge of his life and also sees another creature like himself isolated and alone. Um, so that becomes the climax of the story and the crux of the story um, when both the emotional um, tension of the story and the plot tension or what the plot is setting up to get to merge at the same moment at that same point of climax and the crux of the story.
So, now that I've kind of gone through that, uh, I have some suggestions and ideas for how to revise then for more cohesion. Um, so since short stories are really short, you want to make as much say as like you want to make as little say as much as possible. So to this end, everything in this story should link to that crux and to that main idea. So you want everything in the narrative to be chained together, pulling towards that main idea, whether that be the overall mood of the story, if there's some areas where the mood might not fit to that idea, thinking about how to kind of create that cohesion, uh, the style of the story, what point of view it's told in, like we saw with Telltale Heart, the first person point of view further creates that sense of wanting control. So in that story, that point of view and style is really important. Um, how the character represents these things, how metaphor and symbolic language. Um, often in a first draft, you might have lots of symbolic language that doesn't necessarily represent exactly what you want yet. Um, so what I mean by that is, um, at least in my experience, when I'm writing a short story, I might add simile here, simile there, uh, metaphor here, but those metaphors might not be um, co uh, consistent in the sense that they are about the same thing. So if I was writing, like, I guess let's take that story about Bigfoot. Maybe in that story, I want everything to point towards that idea of um, the emotional ties between the character and Bigfoot. I might describe the character in ways that might already start to resonate with the reader for identifying the similarities. So maybe he feels like he he's, um, I probably wouldn't say he has big feet because that's a little too on the nose, um, but maybe he's gangly and he feels too tall and like um, for a lot of the spaces that he's in and just creating this sense through image, through metaphor of already what might be coming later um, in the crux and conf main conflict of the story. Um, at the same time, looking at the central idea now, thinking about, okay, what scenes, what sentences are um, superfluous? What scenes might not actually contribute to that main idea on that main crux of the story? Are there areas where the story goes a bit on a tangent that doesn't actually fit with that main idea? Um, revising out those moments can really help center the narrative towards that crux of the story and make sure that everything in the story is fitting toward the big picture, that big idea. Um, and at the same time, if um, maybe you're more of a sparse writer, which I can be, uh, I tend to be, um, where are there areas to build more towards that central moment? Are there places where you could preemptively create a bit of foreshadowing towards that main idea. So in my Sasquatch story, for example, in one part, he is drinking a can of kokanee. And I realized that on kokanee cans, I think all of them, if not uh, most of them, there's always like a little Sasquatch in on the can. So I created a moment of him feeling like he wants to drink again and seeing the Sasquatch on the can and that being like, all right, I'm not, instead of drinking, I'm going to go find Bigfoot. So things like that, where you can add more of that central idea into the main narrative to create more of that chain linking to get to that climactic moment. And to also create those layers of underlying meaning as well. So where things might go awry, as I <laughs> stated here, um, and again, to restate as well, like with all writing advice, um, this idea of things going awry is opinions of myself, um, which I use to keep myself grounded in writing my the stories that I like to write um, and writing the types of stories I like to write, which are often 
very individual, very character based. Um, so as with all writing advice, take it or leaving, leave it depending on how it serves your story. Um, but some things that I might suggest avoiding would be a grandiose theme of epic proportions. And what I mean by that is when some stories will tackle too large of ideas for the specific narrative. Um, so, uh, so for example, in Telltale Heart, rather than writing about the nature of humans to want control, the story is about that character wanting control. Um, it's not necessarily a statement about humanity itself, but rather that character in that situation. And so if, like in my story, like it's about not the nature of humans hitting rock bottom. Like it's very much more specific than that. Um, to me, this really helps keep things grounded um, and also can help move the story forward as sometimes it can be almost like, um, it can keep you frozen to try to write about all of humanity or all like a lot of these really grand ideas as um, people are all different. Um, and sometimes thinking too large can hold you back from really getting into that singular character and that singular experience. Um, as often we will use stories to represent larger ideas, but when actually writing the story that can really hold you back. Um, and thinking more like, what is the case for this character? For me, that's really helpful to ground myself in that story and think about what is the main idea for this character? Um, and maybe those themes, those larger themes will come out of the story, but when writing it, really focusing in is, um, for me, that's like a really big key part. Um, and to, also, doo -doo. oh, for me as well, avoiding going into writing the story with that grandiose theme or objective at the beginning can also be something that might stop you from finishing the story. Um, for me, if I already have the exact, like, this is exactly the main idea I want to show before I start writing it, that usually makes me too prescriptive and I force my story too much into this tight space rather than letting it breathe in the first draft and then seeing what I have and then focusing in. Um, so my advice might be to like to avoid starting it with that big objective, um, but that does work for some people. So if that works for you, then keep doing that. But yeah, usually what I like to think of it at, like is I am going to tell a story about something interesting about this interesting person. And that's where I kind of keep it when I'm writing the original draft um, to kind of keep everything a little bit closer and grounded to the main narrative. Uh, but that is all I have for you today. And I hope that that was clear. I know it can get a little theoretical, but I hope that that was clear and interesting. And if you have any feedback, do let me know. And thank you for coming or watching the recording. And I'll now be open for questions.